Spice Isle, call Grenada. Right, so we want to start off the program by looking at Maurice Bishop. So who was Maurice Bishop? So Maurice Bishop was a Grenadian by descent. He was not born in Grenada, but he was of Grenadian parentage. His parents were Grenadian, so his parents were Alimenta Bishop. She passed a few years ago, and his father was Rupert Bishop. Rupert Bishop was actually killed um, in the 1970s. I believe it was 1979 itself. Um, I stand corrected here. But he was killed in the early years of the revolution. So um, he died early, early on, right? But his parents, Maurice Bishop's parents, were Alimenta Bishop and Rupert Bishop. So Maurice Bishop himself was born in Aruba. So at the time in Grenada's history, and many people would not know about this, uh, many Grenadians would have migrated uh, to the ABC Islands. So that's Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao towards the south, close to Venezuela there. Um, during the oil boom, there was an oil boom, um, and Aruba was flourishing with oil and, and wealth. So many Grenadians migrated. Um, even Sir Eric Matthew Geary himself spent a few years well living in Aruba, right? So Maurice Bishop was born in Aruba, but we have claimed him he's Grenadian because, of course, um, through lineage, his parents were Grenadians. So Maurice Bishop, for all facts, is a Grenadian. So he came to Grenada as a very young child at the age of six. His family migrated back to Grenada. And uh, from then he, he lived in Grenada. But he was born in Aruba. Uh, but we, we claim him. He's ours, right? He's a Grenadian, true and true. So Maurice Bishop, uh, he attended primary school. And then he went on as for his secondary school education. He attended the prestigious Presentation Brothers College on the top of um, the hill, or the boys on the hill. Um, so Maurice Bishop was a Presentation Brothers College alumni, and he would become the first uh, PBC old boy, as we call it, to become Prime Minister of Grenada in 1979. Um, we know that many others have gone on um, from the Presentation Brothers College to become Prime Minister. This includes the current Prime Minister, Honorable Deacon Mitchell. That also includes the former Prime Minister, um, the Right Honorable Dr. Keith Mitchell. And that also includes the prime minister before that, um, Judge Brison, right? So we have a history of um, prime ministers coming from the Presentation Brothers College. And Maurice Bishop was the first, and, uh, and some may say he paved the way for many others to become a uh, prime minister. Um, but yes, so he attended the Presentation Brothers College and. Uh, he did his five years there. Um, what was most interesting about Maurice Bishop was that he was no ordinary student. Uh, he played a very active role as a young um, secondary school student. He played a very active role in school and was very engaged in many extracurricular activities of the school. So uh, he served as president of the student council. I don't know how many student councils still remain in existence in Grenada today, but um, student council was a way in which um, young students at the secondary school level could have um, received um, experience in being leaders, training to be leaders, and uh, good communication, public speaking skills, right? All that um, came through the student council body, which was really a representative body of students. 
um, representing the, the interests of students in schools. So Morris Bishop was the president of the Student Council. He was also president of the Debating Society. Um, he was the president of the Historical Society. Um, he was the founder of the Grenada Assembly of Youth after truth and it was there uh through that group he, he went on to meet some of his later colleagues who would join with him um to lead the revolution in, in 1979 right he would have encountered um bernard code um and others through that assembly of youth after truth um group that was formed he was also the editor of the student's newspaper at school at the Presentation Brothers College. So um, Morris Bishop at an early age was what you would call a social activist, right? He was actively engaged in the life of the school and ensuring um, things that he was passionate about. He, he led them. So he was a, a leader at a very early age. And these extracurricular activities, of course, would have helped him and fostered his, his leadership growth. Um, and of course, it paid off in the end when he became prime minister. But uh, just a note here. So um, many times, you know, students always feel like, you know, I used to be a secondary school teacher. And students always feel that, you know, oh, it's only academic. School is not only academics getting into the life of the school and, and taking part in extracurricular activities also important, right? And we have, um, of course, the life of Maurice Bishop tells us that, right? So he was engaged as, as a young secondary school student, as a social activist and doing um, engaging in the life of the school in many ways. So that's just a plug here on that. So as I mentioned, uh, after Maurice Bishop, uh, he would have completed his secondary school education. He worked for a couple years. Um, and then, of course, as I mentioned, many of the brilliant minds of the time migrated outside of Grenada to get their education. Uh, so Maurice Bishop was one. He migrated to, the, to London and... Uh, he went there in 1963 uh, to study law. So Maurice Bishop um, was a lawyer. He was um, educated in London. He attended the University of London. And uh, then he went on to Grace Inn, etc. And he, he be, that's where he got his legal education um, that made him a lawyer. While he was in the UK, he also started a legal aid clinic. Um, again, Maurice Bishop was a very uh, social activism. Um, he was driven a lot by that. So um, he started a legal aid clinic uh, to provide advice to the, those in need, the poor in, in the UK, uh, many of the Black West Indian um, in the UK at the time, needing le legal representation, uh, Morris Bishop started a legal clinic to serve their needs, right? So um, he continued his social activism during his, his stay in the UK. So what inspired Morris Bishop in his political journey. So he would return to Grenada in uh, 1973. So he would have, li he lived about 10 years in the UK uh, before he would return to Grenada in 1973. Um, but during that, that period of time, he was inspired. Um, great leaders are often inspired in some way, shape or form. And uh, Maurice Bishop was by no means an exception to being inspired along his political journey. So what really was the inspiration um, for Maurice Bishop? What really was happening in, in his era and his time uh, that would have inspired him as he made moves towards um, political leadership?
again share the live make sure you hit the share button and share the live so this uh information content education could reach a broader audience so share the live so the uh morris bishop was inspired by several regional and international events um most leaders, as I mentioned, they are inspired by things that are happening within their own environment, within their own societies, whether in their country or outside of their country, what we call external forces. So one of the external forces at the time was the Cuban Revolution. So the Cuban Revolution, again, um, when we speak about the Caribbean region, sec I think, I think first to the Grenada Revolution is the Cuba Revolution. So the Cuba Revolution was led again by Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro was young at the time. He too was a lawyer. Um, he was a lawyer and he led the Cuba Revolution in 1959. And it's still today one of the most successful revolution. It has continued beyond the life of Fidel Castro. Um, his brother um, continued, and today we, we still have the, the Cuba Revolution in some shape or form, um, still exists, right? Our communism government exists in Cuba today. So Morris Bishop was inspired by the Cuban Revolution, by Fidel Castro, and um, how he led the revolution, and all the things that he was doing in Cuba at the time. And of course, Fidel Castro was a communist, right? He was a communist. Um, so his government was a different form of government. And at the time, communism was still very new, right? Um, not many places in the world, and especially in the western part of the world, U.S., North America, etc., they weren't doing communism. Russia was, but Russia is on the next side of the world. Um, under the Soviet Union, they had communism. And there were a couple places in Africa um, where there was communism government. But for the most part, democracy reigned in the Western Hemisphere. So Cuba was an exception to having a young prime minister who had taken over the country, Fidel Castro, and he was leading a different type of political governance in Cuba, that of communism. So Maurice Bishop was inspired by Fidel Castro and throughout the revolution from 1979 to 1983, he and Fidel became very close friends. Um, Cuba became an important ally to Grenada and helped Grenada in many ways. Um, students were able to go to Cuba and study. Um, they helped with the building of the Morris Bishop International Airport. They helped with military, right? So Cuba became an important ally for Grenada during the years of the revolution. Again, because Morris was inspired by um, the work of Fidel Castro and what he was doing there for Cuba. And he hoped in some ways that uh, he could replicate that uh, in Grenada. What else was happening at the time? Um, what else was happening at the time? So at the time, um, we was the Caribbean region was still um, going through the after effects of the breakup of the West Indian Federation. So I will have to probably provide a bit more information. But the West Indian Federation, again, the founder of Federation was a Grenadian, for those who are on, on our way. The father of Federation was T.A. Marichaux. So today, the T.A. Marichaux Community College is named after T.A. Marichaux. He was the father of Federation. So the West Indian Federation was the very first attempt of Caribbean islands coming together to begin the process of integration. So today we have CARICOM. CARICOM is actually the second attempt of Caribbean integration. The first attempt was the West Indian Federation. 
the, the federation did not last. It was, it was started by T.A. Mary Show, and um, it lasted for a couple of years, but um, it eventually it dissolved. And once federation ended in 1962, um, islands began the process of moving towards independence. So that began with Jamaica and Trinidad. They were the first islands who were part of the original West Indian Federation to move uh, towards independence. So Jamaica and Trinidad earned their independence in 1962. That's why Trinidad this year was celebrated the Jubilee. 60 years of independence, achieving their independence in 1962. Same, similarly, Jamaica too as well this year celebrated their 60th year of in being independent um, because they became independent in 1962 as well. So once Federation broke up, islands moved towards independence. The big islands, of course, they moved first to achieve independence, and later that would be followed by the smaller islands, including Grenada, uh, Grenada achieving its independence on February 7th, uh, 1974. So Maurice Bishop, um, returning to Grenada in 1973, but while being in the, in the UK, of course, was inspired by the, the West Indian Federation and that attempt to, for Caribbean islands to come together to have one voice and to strive towards unity and um, economic and political independence on their own diminishing, of course, the power of uh, Britain and the British monarchy and the whole col colonial colonialism, right? So he was inspired by that event, the breakup of federation. Also, further from us, but still playing an important part, was the events that was occurring in um, Ghana. So when we talk about West African, lots of Grenadians like to uh, say we, we are from, we have West African ancestors. And um, when we look at the West African coast, one of the countries there is Ghana. So some of the practices we have today um, would have originated from Ghana because that's where some of our ancestors were taken from and brought across to the Caribbean um, as part of the, the Atlantic slave trade, right? So, um, Morris Bishop was also inspired by um, the events that took place in Ghana. So, under N. Kumar, um, he's most known for leading a, a successful coup in Ghana, uh, where he seized power and, of course, removed colonialism from um, Ghana, so British colonialism from Ghana, right? So that occurred in 1957. Um, at the time, of course, Morris Bishop was still studying to be a lawyer, etc. Um, you know, he wasn't studying to be a lawyer yet. He was in Grenada. Um, that's 1957. Um, he was inspired by um, N. Kumar and what he had done in Ghana, freeing the, the Ghanaian people from um, colonial rule and moving towards independence through way of a coup, right? Uh, he did it by way of a coup, not through uh, the democratic process, um, but through way of a coup, right? So N. Kumar. So you can look up more about N. Kumar. Uh, if you are interested in him, I won't go much into him. But he's most notably known for um, leading Ghana into independence in 1957 through way of a coup. And it, he, Ghana at the time was one of the first um, African nations to become independent from Britain um, through that means, or even independent at all at the time, right? So um, Ghana and Nkumar. Um, 
most notably Maurice Bishop was inspired. So that's further away across the Atlantic, back to our ancestral lands in Ghana. But inspiration also came um, from there for Maurice Bishop. And lastly, uh, Morris Bishop was also inspired by this gentleman, um, Che Guevara. Um, he was a leftist. Um, he was actually one of the key players of the Cuban Revolution. He was more military. I mean, Fidel Castro was the head or the face of the Cuban Revolution. Che Guevara was the military man. Um, behind of the Cuba Revolution, right? So he was killed in 1967, um, but he was um, very pivotal in um, the success of the Cuban Revolution and bringing communism to Cuba, right? So Maurice Bishop was also inspired by uh, Che Guevara, right? Um, che Guevara was originally, I think, from Nicaragua, um, although he played a major role in the Cuban Revolution, he was actually from Nicaragua. So that those were the events um, regionally and internationally that inspired Maurice Bishop along his political journey. So again, uh, we have the breakup of the West Indian Federation in 1962, uh, the Cuban Revolution of 1959. Um, 1957, that's the um, Ghana um, gaining independence through a coup led by N. Kumar, and of course, um, the work of Che Guevara, who was a military revolutionary leftist um, that had a, an important role in, in bringing the success of the Cuba Revolution and bringing communism to Cuba. So Maurice Bishop, so after spending 10 years outside of the country, he returned to Grenada in 1973. So now he was a lawyer and uh, he returned to Grenada, returned to his homeland. And of course, um, having the political um, interest, um, he formed the Movement for Assemblies of the People, MAP. So he came back to Grenada and he, he formed this group. Um, later on, the group merged um, and formed what today history books will tell us, articles will tell us, papers will tell us. Um, he, he, what was formed was the, the New Jewel Movement, or NJM, right? So, you know, so the white man, who of course would uh, would join with Maurice Bishop and uh, lead the revolution of March 13, 1979. He was one of the colleagues, uh, the comrades, uh, as as the word most used, who was part of that group of intellectuals who led the revolution. Unison White Man had the jewel movement, and together with MAP, they created a new organization called the New Jewel Movement, or NJM. So the New Jewel Movement, NJM, um, so the word itself spelled out is New Joint Action for Education, Welfare, and Liberation. So that's the meaning of NJM. Um, so for those who may not know what it what it means, what, what the words mean, it's new joint action for education, welfare, and liberation. So that's what NJM stands for, right? And that's what we, we speak about um, when we talk about NJM. So that's our bit today about, of course, uh, Maurice Bishop will continue next week um, sharing some more information about Maurice Bishop. But one of the things most notably about Maurice Bishop was that he was uh, a brilliant orator. He was very articulate, well-spoken. He was able to uh, 
deliver speeches with great awesomeness uh, and art to many of the crowds, and that drew attention to him, right? So uh, in our next feature, we'll share a video uh, where Maurice Bishop speaks about democracy and what de democracy means to him, right? Remember, he was, uh, he was uh, for all intents and purposes, a, a communist leader. And when we speak about communism, um, communism is a political ideology, or some would say a social ideology, uh, focused on um, the working class and uh, ensuring that the working class, um, the good of the working class and production is through the working class, right? Advancement of working class people. All those things are what communism, um, the ideal ideology stands for, right? But importantly, though, despite those views, he did have views about what, what, he, what he believed to be um, good tenants of good governance, essentially, good governance. So... Spice alcohol grenade.